Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, methods in Java. You've been this far looking mainly at um, a class. So you give the class a name, public class, I'll call this one methods. And then thus far, we've just been looking at one method, which is called the main method. And you hopefully are familiar with it, you are comfortable. Uh, it's public, it's a public method. It has a static, um, static, uh, you know, well, it's static, I guess I should say, public static, it returns nothing, so void, main, and then string, args, array of string, called args. And so if you've memorized this, then that's good, and if you don't quite understand everything that's on here, um, then it's okay for now. Eventually, we'll get to a point where it makes sense what each one of these words does and means. But for now, just understand that when you make a class, and if you want to run your class, it will look for a main method. And if it doesn't find a main method, then you'll get an error. And I'll show you that in a minute. As a matter of fact, I could, well, let me compile here. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to the appropriate folder here, which would be... I guess it's maybe not quite fundamentals anymore. Let me just make a new folder called it me methods. Of course, I go into the wrong folder. Okay, methods right here. We'll call it methods.java. And if you, so you compile, and if I run here, it runs, nothing happens because I haven't written any code inside of the main method, but it ran. Um, let me just once again compile and then run and you see now if I get rid of this main method if I delete it and then I compile and I run then you'll get a this message right here that says that there's no main method and when we run a class it looks for the main method we want to run the code in the main method and so I'll keep this main method here but let's start talking about methods in general because you don't always you cannot, you, you can, you have a main method, but you don't necessarily always have to code just simply the main method. Now, what is a method? Oh, uh, that's right here. Maybe a definition. A method is really just a function. Now, the word function um, is probably most, um, most seen you're most familiar with this word function maybe hopefully in a math class but a function is basically uh, what it sounds like it's it's it does something so it's basically um, a function requires sometimes inputs and then sometimes it provides an output in mathematics we say that a function is a relationship that such that for each input there is um, uh, unique output or actually it's the other way around for every output there is one unique input and so let's start thinking here about uh, how functions um, or methods because I'm going to be actually referring to them as methods how they work what their purpose is and um, how do we use them and so we have a method it is a function. Now there's a few things that you, we should note about methods. Um, the inputs are called parameters. Um, and the output is basically just an output. So it has a output maybe right there, okay? Uh, and this is, I would say they're both optional. Um, both optional. Meaning it's possible that you have a method that does not have um, any inputs or any parameters and no outputs. Um, I'll put here after output, I'll put here return. Now let's, let's do a simple method. Well, I guess we'll, let's start talking about the heading here. Okay, a method can be public or it can be private. What's the difference? 
Well, a public method can be accessed from outside of the methods class, outside of this class. A private method cannot be accessed from outside of this class. And so for now, and maybe well into our coding experience in this class, we're just going to declare methods as public. So we start with the word public. You once again already have the main method. You've coded it before. So notice the word public. Both of these methods are in the class called the methods. Now, a method can be a static method, or it can just be a non-static method, and that would be a method uh, you would just not include the word static. Now, there's a lot to be said about static methods, um, but um, at least for this introductory class in um, and in the AP exam. Uh, you're not so much tested on on your understanding of what a static versus a non-static method is. Um, well, I'll make a clear distinction as to when you should use the word static and when you shouldn't or when you don't need to. Uh, so it can be static or non-static, and then I'll leave it for I'll I'll leave the word static on for now. And then we specify whether it returns something, whether it has an output. Does the method return something to the person using it? And if it doesn't, we use the word void, which means that it's basically void empty of a return of an output. There isn't one. Public versus private, static versus non-static, uh, which would, we would delete this word. And then uh, an output, does it return something? And if it does not return something, we place the word void. And then finally, uh, the name of the method. So name. Now afterwards, in parentheses, like that, we include any inputs or any parameters. So that's it, okay? Sometimes if there's no inputs, because again, both an input and output is, are optional here, we leave not we we place nothing inside of the parentheses, nothing at all. And then anything that is going to be in the method will be within these curly braces, right? This is an open curly brace and then a closed curly brace. And so anything in the method here is um, within the two curly braces. Now let's go to this method. It's going to be called the high method. All the high method does is it prints. Hi, how are you? Like that. That's all this method does. Meaning anytime you execute the hi method, it will execute this code within it. Hi, how are you? Now, if you're gonna reference or what we say, we're gonna call this hi method from the main method, and we would do that like this, hi, followed by the set of parentheses like that. We're basically taking the name. We don't need all this stuff right here. None of this, just the name and the parentheses. And that's what I have here. And what I do here on line six, I, I'm executing the high method or function. And so if you remember, or if, if you recall here earlier, I mentioned that when you run a class, it looks for the main method. So I have two methods here, the main method, and I have this high method, two. But when I run, if I compile this, I should be good. There it is, there's no errors. When I run, which I can do by clicking here on the little running uh, man, or I can do control R, it will automatically, the Java knows that it needs to go to the main method, so it ignores this one, okay? Compiling it basically changes both of these um, source code, code that we understand, to um, to machine code, so language that the machine understands. However, compiling does that, but running will go straight will go straight to the main method, and it will look at the first line in the main method and say, okay, that's a that's a comment. I'm going to ignore it, and then it's going to look at the next line in the main method, and it's going to execute the high method 
And so then it goes to the high method and it says, I need to execute your code and it executes this. And what's better than to show you than to do this, okay? Hi, how are you? A simple method. Now let's talk about this, the word static here because I'm trying, I'm executing the high method. High, here's where I'm executing the high method or placing a call to the high method from the main method, which is a static method, then high needs to be also a static method. Let me get rid of this so that you can see what would happen if I do not include the word, uh, in the static method right here. The error tells you everything. At compilation, you get an error. So you say non-static method high, um, meaning high is not a static method because I deleted the word static. Non-static method high cannot be referenced from a, stati a static context, meaning I'm trying to uh, reference or call the high method from the main method, which is a static method, and I cannot do it if high is a non-static method. And so you'll find that any time that you're making a new method, and you're going to call that method from a static method, which in this case the main method is, then the high method needs to be declared as a static method as well. Otherwise, a compilation will get an error. Now we're good and we run and we're good, right? Now let's talk a little bit about inputs or parameters. What is an input? What is a parameter? An input or a parameter, and I'm going to call them parameters, are things that you can send to your method, to the high method. So suppose that you want to say not just hi, how are you, but maybe you want to say like something like hi Alex, how are you, right? And so I could put hi Alex here, how are you? And if I run this, it prints, hi, Alex, how are you? But then let's suppose that you want to generalize this. So you want a method that can say hi to anybody, not just Alex. Then I could do the following. I could say hi and then terminate the string plus and then maybe put, uh, make a variable called the name plus and we're going to get rid of Alex right there and then start the string, how are you, right? And so name is a variable now, which means that it can hold any value. Because it's going to hold a name, an actual word, it needs to be of data type string. Now if I make here a variable string name equals Alex, and I run this, and so once again name is equal to the string Alex, so right here when I say hi, it's going to replace this with Alex. Notice how it still prints the same thing. Um, and anytime that you execute hi, it's going to print hi Alex, how are you? So we're not quite where we want to be because we want to be able to say hi to any person, not just Alex. And so what we are going to do instead of making the variable name um, a variable within the hi method, what we're going to do is we're going to add the variable as a parameter, which we do by cutting that part. I'm going to delete this. And then in the parentheses is where the parameters go. I'm going to paste it there. Uh, paste it there. So string name, always the data type followed by the name of the variable. And so now this variable name is whatever that is. And this is called a parameter. It is a variable that serves as an input to the high method. Now if I compile now, we're going to see an error again. And that's because there's uh, something going on here. I'm trying to I'm trying to execute the high method like this in line six, meaning, hey, run all the code in the high method. But the high method now requires a string as an input. And it says right here, method high in class methods cannot be applied to the given types. Uh, required a string, found no arguments. Required talks about what we need here. We need a string as an input. Found 
meaning it found no arguments, talks about the fact that there's no arguments in the parentheses here. I'm not sending as it is, I'm not sending high anything. And so when I put high and, um, and then I have the parentheses here, here I need to specify what inputs I want to send. And my input has to match the data type of the variable of the first parameter here, name. And so in here, I could type something like hi and write the string Alex. So Alex is an argument, it's an input that I'm going to send to the method hi. And think of this as sending that string, sending it to the variable name. And then I'm going to print hi, uh, hi Alex, how are you? Now, if I compile, it should be good without error. And if I run, it prints, hi, Alex, how are you? But now, let's say that we want to print the same thing, hi, but not Alex anymore. We want to do hi. And then you write, hi, uh, Lisa, right? Execute the hi method. But now I'm going to send it the string Lisa. Now Lisa is going to be stored in the variable name. And when you print hi name, how are you? Name is going to have the value of Lisa. And so now I'm executing the hi method twice, but I'm sending a different argument for each execution. And if I run this, it says, hi, Alex, how are you? Hi, Lisa, how are you? right and so i can send values think of these think of this as sending a string to this high method here's the high method the string is going to be stored in this variable now let's then take this a step further because inputs and parameters is plural meaning you can have more than one parameter right here this is called a parameter uh, this is called an argument. They're kind of the same thing, but when the, you're actually talking about the variable name, it's a parameter. When you're talking about what you're sending, it's an argument. How do you send more than one uh, thing? Well, let's expand on this. Hi, Alex, how are you? Uh, what are you doing? Let's go, what? are you doing and then i'm going to put here and i'm going to write here um what's today tonight i'm going to put here time i'm going to put time okay uh it's still a question so i'll follow that variable with the string question mark like that time I'm gonna add time as a parameter so I have one parameter I can add a second parameter by placing a comma time um, what I'm gonna put here is later or tonight or tomorrow right what are you doing today what are you doing tomorrow and so it's still a string so I'm gonna put a string time so now I have two parameters or two inputs I, I need a string that is gonna be the name and I need a second string that will be the time. And so if I compile, you should expect an error because these are not matching up. My call to the high method is sending one string, whereas the method high requires two strings, two parameters. So I need to send two right here. And so if I compile this, you'll see the error right there. High method and class methods cannot be applied to the given types. What are you required? A string and a string that comes from this right here. You need two parameters found only one string that comes from the fact that I only wrote one string Alex in both cases. Now, let me do the following then. Hi, Alex. Uh, hi, Alex. How are you doing? What are you doing tonight? Right now, right here, I have two parameters now. I mean, well, I have two arguments, Alex and tonight. They're separated by a comma. So I have two. And so now this should not have um, any compilation errors. I'm going to compile. And it works fine, 
But now notice that Lisa is still this high method where I'm sending Lisa to the method is still not working. If I take you back a little, just a little bit further on the previous compilation error, it said you have a problem um, right here on line six with the high Alex. And you also have a problem right here on line seven, right here, line seven, right? With the Lisa, um, I fixed line six. And so now I only have an error here in line seven with the Lisa. I need a second argument that is supposed to be a string. And then I'll write here tomorrow. If I compile this, now we're good. And the reason we're good is because I need two string high, the method high needs two strings, two parameters. And now I'm sending two strings both times. The argument Alex and the argument tonight, Lisa tomorrow. If I compile now and I run, it says, hi Alex, how are you? Do how are you? Um, what are you doing tonight? And hi, Lisa, how are you? What are you doing tomorrow? And let's talk a little bit about, so those are parameters. I could add as many parameters as I need here, as many as I want. Now let's talk a little bit about um, this, the return, the output, and having the word void here. For that, um, I'm not gonna work with this example. I'm gonna work with an example that I think is a little more appropriate. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna make a variable called double. Remember that double is the way that we store a number, a numeric value that has a decimal in it. And I'm gonna call it area. And then I wanna make a method circle uh, let me just make this a little more uh, area circle I'll call it area and then I'm gonna write here just um, I'm gonna put a 10.0 okay and I'm gonna put a comment here the area of a circle with radius 10.0. Okay, so I'm saying the variable area is a double. It equals circle 10. Now let me explain how we're gonna do this, okay? We're gonna make a new method called public. It still has to be static because I'm gonna execute it from within the main method and the main method is a static method. I'm gonna copy the name here um, I need to put the void beforehand. Okay, let me explain here what we're doing. We're writing this method called circle area. And let me just make a comment here and say what this method does. The This uh, circle area method returns the area of a circle with radius r. And if you don't remember what the area formula for a circle is, let me write it here. It is uh, pi times the radius times the radius, or pi times the radius squared. Uh, the keyword here is returns, meaning it gives you the area of the circle. So the circle area method gives you returns the area of a circle. Uh, pi is the uh, constant 3.14. And so um, 10.0 here is supposed to be the radius of my circle. Notice how it's an argument. It's inside of the parentheses after circle area. Here's circle area. And so that means that this uh, numeric value has to be stored in a variable, just very much like Alex was stored in string name and tonight was stored in string time. 
10.0 needs to be stored in a parameter and that parameter has to have data type double and I'll call it R. R because it stands for the radius of the circle. So the 10.0, notice circle area, is circle area, the 10.0 is going to be stored in this variable, in this double R, right? And then we start thinking, okay, well, let's, let's return Let's return the area of the circle. Well, okay, that's a simple calculation. We know it's 3.14, just that's pi, right? Times the radius r times the radius r. And the radius is right there, right? If I had instead of called the instead of calling this r, I had called it rad, short for radius, I could that'd be fine. I just wouldn't make sure I have I have put it here rad times rad. Now, when you when you have this um, return statement, this can no longer be void. I cannot, and I can do that. I can show you that by compiling. And it says incompatible types void cannot be converted to double. Okay, there's a lot going on here, but what's happening here is that this right here needs to be the data type um, of what you're returning, and what I'm returning is 3.14 times rad times rad. And if rad is the is this parameter, which is given this value, 10.0, that would be 3.14 times 10 times 10. And so um, you should expect for this mathematical calculation to have an answer that possibly is a decimal value. And we store decimal values in doubles. So what I'm returning here is a double and so I need to change the word void to match that double. So it's returning a double, right? Now, if I compile, my error is gone. And this is how we need to understand what's going on. Right here, I'm saying that this variable area is a double, it's going to equal what circle area returns to me when I send it 10. Meaning 10 is going to be sent to circle area and it's going to be stored in this variable rad. And I'm going to return 3.14 times 10 times 10. I'm going to return that back to where I call the circle area. So it's going to be returned here and it's going to be stored in this variable. And so if I want to see if this was done correctly, I can, after saying area equals what circle area returns to me, when I send it 10, I can print, and I'll just copy this to save myself some time. I can print area right here. And now let me give it a little more context here. I'll say circle area of circle with radius and right here I can put 10 and then I can put a colon and terminate this and then put the value of area like so if I compile and I run area of circle with radius 10 314 that's the area right now notice I want you to notice a few things here Always, when we run our code, when we press on the little run button, it goes straight to the main method and it looks at the code in the main method, this code. That's what it's looking at. The first line says, execute the high method, which is this one. Send it Alex and tonight. Those get stored in name and time. And the high method, what does it do with this name and time? It prints to the screen. Hi, Alex, how are you? What are you doing tonight? And then it seeds control to the main method again. And we then execute line seven, which once again print, uh, executes the high method, but now with two different arguments, Lisa and tomorrow. And then after those two are executed, which happens right here, we make a variable um, area, which is of type double. And we say that area is gonna equal 
what circle area with that method returns when I send it 10. And so circle area is the method right here. If you send the 10.0 to circle area, which is right here, that argument is a double. It gets stored in this variable. And circle area will return 3.14 times rad times rad times 10 times 10. That's 100. 100 times 3.14 is 314 and it, re it actually returns that to line 9 and it gets stored in this variable and then I print area of circle with radius 10 plus whatever area happens to be which after line 9 is going to be 314.0 there's one thing here that is something I, I guess just looking at it here um, I can make the following, I can do a double called R 10.0 and then for circle uh, area I can send, instead of sending 10.0 I'm going to send it R which happens to be still 10.0 and right here this is bothering me, I've hard coded the 10.0 here but I want to put plus R plus a colon plus area. Because now, if I change the radius r to, uh, from 10.0 to something else, it will, it will not always just print 10.0. If I compile this and I run, it still says the same thing. However, if I change this to maybe a 15, now I'm sending r to circle area, and so that's now 15. And so the area is now going to be 314. And then I'm going to print whatever. Uh, area of circle with radius whatever r is which happens to be 15.0 plus what area happens to be area equals what circle area returns to me when i send it r so if i compile this and run i should see a different value for the area now it's 706.5 so uh just an introduction to methods here we'll have a few more videos to discuss methods but the biggest takeaway for methods is one they carry out a specific functionality this method only prints hi how are you what are you doing uh, with uh, variations depending on the arguments this methods job is to get to calculate the area of a circle if you give it a radius it calculates the area and it gives that area back to you right here on line 10 and understand the fact that you can have parameters multiple more than one or you can you you don't necessarily have to right here there's no output so we have the word void we do not return anything notice that there is no return um, line right here whereas right here we only have one parameter one input and we have we do have an output we return a value this right here